Hi, everybody. Hello there. Jerry. And Linda. Gizmo's out chasing lizards right now. Today we have a show about animals. Yes. More than animals, really. A lot of people are curious about the wildlife in Florida. And we often hear those horror stories. And they're spread like wildfire down here. People spread these rumors that are not firsthand or secondhand or thirdhand. They're fourthhand or, or more. And uh, about in animal encounters. Oh, like the, like the coyotes may attack you while you're walking your dog. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I've heard of uh, people said there are panthers that come out at night here in the villages. Or how about the eagles carrying away dogs too? So I'm scared to go out with Gizmo sometimes. <laughs> All those stories abound here. Uh, and people share them and tell them. And some folks are afraid. And today we are fortunate. From the state of Florida, we have wildlife officer Chad Weber here to discuss animals, particularly animals in the villages. And so we'll find out what the real scoop is. We are so fortunate to have Florida Fish and Wildlife Officer Chad Weber with us today. Gizmo's flying co-pilot with him. And uh, he's gonna answer questions about wildlife, not only here in the villages, but in central Florida. So thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, one thing that comes up almost every day on the application called Next Door. Are you familiar with that, Next Door? Uh, yes, I've heard of it. Snake in the villages. What kind of snake is this? The other day, I'm not going to exaggerate, there was a snake, and it looked to be a garter snake. Okay. There were six other names given to that snake, from pygmy rattlesnake to Florida king snake to black racer, people misidentifying. So people are in fear that they are going to encounter poisonous snakes under every bush. How often do you see actual venomous snakes here in the villages? I mean, it's not uncommon because we do live in Florida and uh, you will by chance maybe encounter a venomous snake. But among the snakes that are in Florida, we have an abundance of non-venomous snakes as opposed to venomous. So we only have six species that are venomous in the state. Now with the villages lying in Sumter County and with all the wetlands that are between here and the, the golf courses, there's a chance that you may encounter it. So um, I would encourage people to visit myfwc.com and uh, read up about the snakes. That way you can identify them. And if you're not sure what it is, uh, the best practice is just to stay away from it. Once in a while, you're on a radio show out of Leesburg, aren't you? Yes, yes. Is that 1410? 1410 a.m., yep. Okay, yep. well, people can watch for you there as you answer questions about wildlife. Absolutely. All right, so you said there were how many venomous types in Florida? There's six venomous species. Six. So the venomous snakes we have in Florida are the eastern diamondback, the pygmy rattlesnake, the timber rattler, coral snake, cottonmouth, and copperhead which is copperhead you're not going to see here. They're predominantly in the, the panhandle of Florida. Okay. Well, here we see 10 to 1 over any other snake, the black racer. Black racers are very prevalent in these areas, and uh, they're a really good snake. They feed on insects and lizards. Um, if you have bushes and shrubs around your home, you're, you're going to see them. I mean, it's just going to be a given. It's Florida. It's warm. We, uh, we have a lot of types of wildlife, especially reptiles, that – love living here so if you move to florida or you live in the villages in central florida you're probably going to run into a black racer at some point and when they're young they don't look like black racers do they they have a, a distinct design on their back yeah they, they they'll have some stripes in their gray and spots um typically they're they're very little and they have a, a round eye um and like i said before if you're not familiar with what snakes are the best practice is just stay away from them or uh, you can visit my fwc and look up snake identification yeah that would be a great thing to do before these people write all these expert opinions on next door uh basically your your pit vipers which would be your cotton mouth and your rattlesnakes and your yeah. copperheads they have an elliptical eye don't they yeah they'll have a, a, a slit eye where a, a non-venomous snake is going to have a round eye okay good advice but the best advice is leave them alone they will move on they will move on i mean they're here to serve a purpose they eat rodents lizards bugs i mean uh without snakes doing their part in the ecosystem rodents would uh be a lot more prevalent well that's great advice and you folks out there just leave the snakes alone i just see too many of them with their head chopped off on the, on the next door have you had any unusual encounters with animals in your job as a fish and wildlife officer mostly with the uh, 
non-native wildlife. I mean, there's been times that uh, we've had emus escape from farms and they'll be running down the side of the road. So we're tasked with helping try to, to ca capture them. And I've been on some, uh, some calls with some of our uh, captive wildlife investigators with exotic animals that are here in Florida, but legally with permitted people. We saw an emu at uh, Uncle Donald's farm last week. We went for a, for a, down there and filmed a show. Yeah. So you may or may not know that uh, we had actually photographed a black bear in our driveway here last year. Uh, he was moving through and it was all the rage. People yeah. were excited. There was a black bear coming through here and coming through Pine Hills. And uh, uh, is that a common thing? We typically don't have a lot of calls for bears in the villages. It's not uncommon. Um, they are very prevalent in Lake County, especially in the northern part of Lake County. Uh, as far as Sumter County, we don't get too much traffic through here. But uh, with the expansion of things, the building and habitat being taken away, they will come through here, especially during times of, uh, say, mating season. Juvenile bears are going to be pushed out of their home territory by larger males. So they start to wander and try to find a home for themselves. But the same practice with that, it's a wild animal. We, we ask people to secure their trash. That way bears are not in their trash. And if you give it its space, it's gonna, it's gonna move on. In my experience, and we, we've, Linda and I have encountered quite a few bears. We were uh, fortunate to go to Alaska a couple of times. Oh, I'm and, sure uh, there's we've seen big bears there. Big bears, <laughs> and, we, and in Northern Minnesota. These bears here are small. They're smaller, but they still need the, uh, they have nutritional needs. So a lot of times when you see bears wandering through areas like this, you'll see them in trash cans, dumpsters, things like that, because it's a lot easier to eat your leftover pizza than it is to go eat a million acorns through, through the day. So we always encourage people to secure their garbage, put away their grills, because that's one thing that people don't think about. When you cook greasy food on a grill, uh, a dirty grill is like a dinner bell for a bear, and they're going to investigate it. Oh, that's great advice and something that I had not thought of. Another animal that gets a lot of attention here is the possibility or threat of a bobcat. Bobcats are very, uh, they're very cautious and elusive. Uh, I've seen them. I've never had one really come up to me. But if you do have small pets like your, your buddy here, uh, it's a good thing, especially in the evening times with bobcats and coyotes to be outside with your animals. Um, they're less likely to be attacked or, you know, uh, try to be taken by a bobcat or a coyote if there's a person or a human with them. Have you personally, and this is your business, but have you heard of a bobcat attack on a person? No, no, not, not that I've heard of, no. Okay. Last week, someone posted a picture and they thought it was a Florida panther. Is that something we might encounter here? Uh, not this far north. Uh, Florida panthers are more in towards South Florida, Everglades areas. Uh, I think the last reported one we had was the furthest north would be like Claremont, that corridor, and that was in the, the mid-90s. So if you're fortunate enough to see a Florida panther, and if it's coming through the villages, obviously call FWC because that's something that we need to be aware of. Right. Okay, great. Because they are protected and in endangered species. So it could happen, but it's really not It's normal. very rare. No, it would not be normal. What about walking your dog here with the coyotes? Now, people every once in a while will pick, post a picture of a coyote walking down the street. Is that the same sort of thing? You're with your dog, coyotes are going to shy away? For the most part, if you're with your dog uh, and keep your animals on a leash and always, you know, in the evening times, be with your animals. Uh, coyotes are very timid as well. Uh, I would keep something that makes noise with you, maybe a, a bottle full of quarters or rocks because it'll scare off the coyote. We don't normally have coyotes uh, approaching humans, and if they are, that's something that we need to be aware of. They have kind of made their place here in Florida. They're here for the long run, and especially in areas like this, we have urban coyotes that, like I said about the bears, they, they're opportunistic feeders, so if you leave trash out, uh, any kind of food will attract them. If you're feeding pets outside, cats, squirrels, and things like that, that has the potential to attract a coyote. So. Great advice, thank you. I have heard some 10th hand information where people swear that small dogs were carried off by eagles. Have you ever heard of such a thing? I have not heard of that. Uh, 
eagles again are a very large bird of prey uh, i have not heard of an eagle attacking a dog or carrying a dog off uh, for the most part they will feed on carrion and fish or uh small rodents but i've, I've not heard of an eagle right it's, a, it's <laughs> basically an urban legend because even gizmo there is gizmo is 15 pounds the the largest bald eagle is not 15 pounds I no i don't think a bald eagle would get off with gizmo i, I just he's kind of big <laughs> For his size. I, I know he's listening. I don't want to hurt his feelings. <laughs> I mentioned this on another video, I think about a year ago. Someone told me that these courtyard villas with the six foot fences are not adequate protection against coyotes. And, you know, I said hogwash. You know, that coyote can't jump a six foot fence. I was dead wrong. Those coyotes can leap up over a seven foot fence. They're, they're, they can climb. And like I said, they're opportunistic. If there's food that's out you know say people are feeding cats on their back porch or there's dog food on the back porch they'll get to it and they they want they want that food because they're hungry they're they're scavengers almost and they're omnivorous so they eat everything they eat plants they eat they'll eat your dog food anything that you leave out um but i, I wouldn't necessarily be terrified of coyotes if if you see one that's acting funny then maybe give us a call but for the most part, you can call a nuisance wildlife trapper and they'll, they'll attempt to remove them. But they're, they're pretty, uh, I don't want to, this kind of cliche, they're kind of wily, like wily coyotes, <laughs> but they get, they get wise to certain things. But as far as people being afraid of them, as long as it, it is a wild animal, keep your distance and they'll typically go on their way. Well, I was stunned when I watched that video that they can jump that fence. So best practice even if you had an enclosed yard don't leave your dog out alone don't leave your dog out alone and if you're feeding them outside bring the food in and uh, you shouldn't have an issue with coyotes well the big animal that everyone wants to talk about here in the villages is the alligator the alligator and we have alligators in virtually every body of water here if it's a mud puddle in the state of florida it has the potential to have an alligator in it <laughs> but that's a, a kind of a train of thought that I would have if I live in Florida. Body of water could contain an alligator. Um, most of the alligators here are not going to chase after you, but the same rules apply. Walking your dogs or pets near the water during the evening time is not a good idea. I would always keep your distance and keep your pets on leashes because again, alligators are a very primitive animal. They are very, uh, uh, they are opportunistic, but they're also instinctual. And if there's a, a small animal like a dog near the body of water, which could resemble maybe a raccoon or a rabbit, that it would be very sad if that happened to your pet, if you're not keeping an eye on them, because the alligator could take them. Okay, good. Now, <laughs> as far as size of alligators, we see them here. And uh, I will say every day, boy, that's a big one. But there really probably aren't any really big alligators in the retention ponds here in the villages, would you say? There could be. I mean, I haven't done a, a count of them in the villages. Um, during the mating season, you'll see a lot of smaller ones that are being pushed out again, like I said about the bears. The alligator is very territorial, so a larger male will push out smaller males to stake claim to his, his ground. So uh, I will say that we have a, a lot more probably 8-foot and under alligators as opposed to 8-foot plus alligators. And when people overreact and are terrified because there's an alligator in the neighborhood and they do call you guys and you respond, that's often not a good thing for the alligator, is it? Well, we'll come if it's four foot and under. You know, I've, I've came to the villages where there's an alligator at the fr person's front door and it's usually during a rainy season or during uh, the summer where they're moving from pond to pond and they just kind of get lost. So I'll grab the alligator and go take it and let it go. Uh, the problem we have is when we have nuisance alligators where people are feeding them or, uh, you know, they're feeding ducks. And if they're feeding the ducks and there's food that's left, you're still kind of feeding the alligators. The alligators are starting to associate humans with food. So when that happens, we have to remove alligators because when they become conditioned to see people and associate them with food, that's where we could have a potentially dangerous situation. It's much harder to relocate a larger alligator. Yes, yes, it is. Um, and larger alligators, like I said, they're more instinctual. And if it becomes a, an issue of public safety, if we remove it and it's shown aggression towards humans and we remove it 
and we relocate it and then we have an incident where that alligator maybe harms somebody, then we didn't do our job. So when we take out the larger ones, if they've been fed, we have to usually euthanize them because it's an issue of public safety. We can't allow an alligator to harm a human. Well, that's uh, that's great advice. Any other uh, advice you would give to folks on dealing with the animals that they might bump into or encounter here in the villages? Well, I, I think uh, the villages is really safe. I mean, you do have the the potential to run into wild animals. I mean, we live in the state of Florida and we have a lot more <laughs> different wildlife than you say the northern states. We do have alligators, snakes, bears, all these things that people have probably heard information about or maybe misinformation. But nine times out of 10, if you give these animals their space, they're gonna leave you alone. It's just in instances where people approach wild animals or they're feeding alligators or they pick up a snake that they don't know what it is. Uh, I would, my best suggestion, if you don't know what it is, just stay away from it. You know, give, give wildlife its, its space and observe from a distance and enjoy it. Uh, also, I wouldn't kill every snake you see just because I know there's the, uh, the only good snake is a dead snake, but that's, that's not really that great because they do serve a purpose and they're, they're going to keep down the rodent population in these areas and along with lizards. Uh, you're more likely to encounter a non-venomous snake than a venomous snake here in the villages. Well, that's great advice. Listen, I, I want to thank you so much for being with us today. I know you didn't have to do it. <laughs> and uh, you are, you're on the front lines for us. You're another one of our law enforcement officers. We support you 100%, and we know most of our viewers do too. And I just want to thank you for being out there every day for us. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. We certainly did enjoy talking to Officer Weber. Yeah, a lot of that stuff that uh, people are afraid of, there's really not that big a reason to be afraid, as long as we treat the wildlife with respect. That's right. You know, they were here first, and it's a beautiful part of this area. That's right. I love knowing they're out there. Uh, you know, stay away from the ones that are potentially dangerous and just enjoy them from afar, and, and we'll all exist just fine. Until next time. See you when you get here.